if Trey is ready, we have a demo. Trey? I, I'm ready. I'm ready Great. to go. Trey Lenepp is in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. It's him and John and him and uh, Duffy. Hold that. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let him me and Donnie hold that place down. So go ahead. Let me add a little fire safety thing that I just added. When I, I went out to Australia a couple of years ago and visited my sister, and everybody out there had fire blankets in the kitchen. It's the fireproof blanket to put a fire out. Um, I have since then bought, bought some and have some in my kitchen too, in addition to the fire extinguisher. So it's basically a blanket you throw on top of a uh, of your burning grease or whatever on the stove puts the fire out. Take away the oxygen, take away the fire. Yep. So, um, and you don't have to check to make sure that's still in date. Okay. <laughs> I got a brand new fire extinguisher out there 20 years ago. <laughs> Um, when I was on lucid wood turning uh, last week, um, I guess last Sunday, they were talking about doing stuff digitally, and they were looking at the inside of the, um, you know, hollowing and that kind of stuff with the, the normal hollowing rig stuff. And they also talked about putting a, a digital picture on top of the of your computer screen and watching it and doing some of that. Well, I got a brilliant idea. Why don't I just do that and use plastic? So I'm gonna turn a sphere tonight. And what I did is I took a piece of plastic, I drew a line through the center for alignment and drew a round circle with a, with a marker. So I'm gonna show you how, how it works. And it really, it's really a sweet, sweet deal. So let's switch over and Okay, that's the sphere that you know I just turned. But what we're going to do is I'll pull this off and I'll, I'll walk all the way through the process of doing it. Let me find the center center of this. And I know everybody knows exactly what this is, right? Makes a great center punch. Yeah, I know what those are. I use them at work. Use them at work. Yeah, we yeah. use them for driving into the blacktop and use them for control points. No, it's it's a gear for yeah, a car. Car. It's gear for car. Car. gear. Yeah, and the, and it's hardened steel, so it makes a fabulous punch. Works really good for driving into blacktop too. Okay. <laughs> okay. What kind of so gear we're, was it? It's it's for it's a one of the uh, biting teeth for a cotton gin. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just round this off right now. We all have a cotton gin laying around the yard. Oh, let me switch you back to a better view. Oh, my gin store bought. I don't I don't make my own from cotton. You can go to a survey warehouse that sells survey equipment, and they'll sell them to you. They're cheap. Okay. okay. I now have a, so it's turned round. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the size. And you can't see that, so let me flip to a different camera. Okay, see if this camera's gonna. Huh. Where it's. Yeah, Woodstock. I don't know what. Crazy. I don't know I what it's say, doing. Can we play some Pink Floyd in the background? Or... <laughs> I'd say that's the late seventies. I don't know. Is it, is that camera in demo mode? Maybe. Whoa! No, that's a, that's a scan. No. That's a scan error. It's not. It's not syncing up with the computer correctly. It's trying to. Okay, I'm looking at it on the camera. It looks good. I punch the button. And it's doing the other. Uh, it must be the software. Tell me this: What software are you using to integrate the cameras? Let me let me this off and back on. I was going to suggest resetting it within the software. Yeah, that sometimes works. Yeah. With flickering and flashing and whatnot. <clears throat> okay. Well, 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 usually well. the camera just stalls, but who knows? 
Okay, just for information, we were I was shipping out or mailing out um, logos, our Worldwide Woodturners logo that we had made up. Uh, I only have 20 left. That's what the boss tells me. And how do you get them? They're expensive. You have to send me a note by email to my email address. That's captain, C-A-P-N, Eddie Castellan at gmail.com. If you send me a note there, I will type out the address and we'll mail it. Because of you, our members, we have these available. Somebody help me pay for them. Somebody accept the money for the postage. We provided the envelopes. It's all a team effort. So if you'd like to have one, it says .com. Peel that .com off because we're .org. Uh, and I'm going to make a new deal for more cutters, more labels real soon. And I'll, I'll have the address promptly done. I just had the back window of my uh, Honda CRV blown out by a rock on the street. And the only piece that stayed in was behind that decal. <laughs> so see, it had purpose. Uh, David J says his name is not in the chat to how come. David, I don't think you can send yourself a chat. Uh, the chat really believes you know what you're talking about. Okay, we're waiting. No, for sure no the, thing, the thing is, when they're on below there, where you have everyone, you have a list of names there to send a message to. My name is not in there. Yeah, well, because you can't send a message to yourself. Yeah. You can't. That's what you're saying. You can't. They, no, you know I what you're I, saying. I didn't say that. I said, yeah, you you have a list there, but is my name on your list? It will be, yes. It'll be on everybody else's list except yours. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. No worries. Your name will always be at the top anyway. Yeah, but mine always comes up and says me. I don't yeah. know why. No, it, will, it will do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. You're on my list. Yeah, everybody else will see your name, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, yours says David J. in Michigan. Right. Yeah. Everybody send a note to David J. in Michigan. <laughs> I already did because David J. said he's mailing me some pens. Thanks, David J. <laughs> right. Is Trey back yet? Great. He's getting lined up. I see. Oh, I see. He's he's getting in. He's working on this. On, I can put him on spotlight. There he is now. There we are. Let me mention that the co-host. You're, you're muted, Trey. You're muted, Trey. Trey. You're muted. Okay. I got to mention that the co-host thing. Off. I got it. All right. The co-host thing we talk about, that's people that get involved in your club, and it's not restricted. You can be a member just like anybody else. And once you start working with us and helping us out on things and have a contribution to the club, which we really look for, uh, we'll plug, plug you in there. Like Paula's handle on our gallery. Uh, um, Doug handles some stuff out there for the military. We have a handful of guys that do this and they all get paid really well. All right, Trey, it's back to you. Circle and all. Okay, I seem to have it up and running now. Now I've turned, turned the, uh, just a cylinder. And what I've done is I've zoomed in, I put the pattern on it and I've set my zoom so that I know that I can get the block out of the piece of wood. Now, the sphere that I turn out of here is going to be, and I'll keep this for the, it looks like 45 uh, mil millimeters, or I guess in inches or whatever. Oh, okay, uh, if our American folks talk about inches. Oh, okay, it is gonna be one and, What's three that? Quarters? Four no, it's a little less than three people. quarters. But so how many 30 seconds is that? <laughs> a lot of oh. <laughs> My tape measure only does six tapes. <laughs> Just say the number with confidence, Trey. People will believe you. That right there is one inch and 33, 30 seconds. That sounds perfect. There you, there you go. Perfect. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this template to it. And I got a, a point there and a point there. And I'm aligning. Oh, okay. So that okay. image is over the top now, of your really Now I, it's thing. over the top of my computer. Or I mean, top of my TV. And I've aligned that center line to my drive center and my tailstock. 
That way I know that way I'm not cutting an oblong elliptical shape. I'm gonna cut a sphere. Then I put the block of wood back in. And I have a pattern to cut to. Mm -hmm. I'm just using a roughing gouge right now. I could cut it, get the bulk, bulk out of here. If you think the screen before would drive people crazy, think about a new member turning in on this. This is this is one of those uh, one of those systems that you would use for hollowing, right? JT Tools used to make one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got two or three versions of it that really that were really handy. Yeah, Eric Lundstrom does too. This looks like a great way to get this here. I like this a lot. Yeah, that's pretty one easy. uses. <clears throat> A lot easier and less set up than the paper and lights that Theo did. Now, I just grabbed a uh, my bowl gouge, and I'm lining up, and I make the cut. That's the direction I cut in, following that. That's what I'm going to cut. So I'm going to line that up along the bowl as I'm cutting, and I'm watching the TV as I make the cut. And I'm actually on, I'm only about a 30 second of an inch at a time right now. Unlike the ball jigs, this is doing a slice. I wish Dane was with us tonight because after a couple of beers, Dane would figure this out. And now I got to get a TV and a camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and figure out how to get that TV closer. <laughs> the camera's no problem. They make USB cameras feed into so many TVs, and they're really inexpensive. Which means if you get a blow off and it takes the camera out, you get another one. Kate, I think I'm with you, man. This is so cool. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty handy, pretty neat. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it really if is. And, and small monitors like that don't cost much either. Yeah, I'm loving no. it. No, I mean, a 28 inch monitor at Walmart is under 100 bucks. I think it's well, closer that's to problem. 80. That's too, that's too big. You need the small one so you can get mounted next to your TV and get, get too used to it. That okay, makes it look so easy. It feels like you're cheating. Yeah. I am. I'm, che I'm cheating. Now I'm going to go back and clean it up. Rather than a TV monitor or anything, you could use a tablet or a iPad or a Huawei, like a tablet screen would be perfect. Yeah, you can drive your iPhone to your iPad. Yep, yep. Well, if you were like doing stuff for production, that'd be awesome too. You just set your template right on there. Get it perfect every time. Trey and I were talking, think about spindle work. Yeah, you have to duplicate spindle. Okay. Be able to match all four table legs almost exact. That's a rough turn smear that's probably down to uh, maybe a couple, you know, ten thousandths or so off or closer, five that's or ten right, thousandths. Right. And you can tell when you look at it, if you look at the top and bottom, if those, if that distance is the same distance off, that means this is dead center and that ball is perfectly round. Yeah. If it was off and this was moved over to the side, I would be cutting more on one side and I would wind up with an oblong ball instead of actually a sphere. Um, That's cool. Well, that's great. Right. Wow. Um, yeah, that's six years of sucks on a rooster, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, took all, I took all of five minutes. It took, I'm sorry it took that long. Um, well, I tell you, y'all talk about driving your iPhones. I, I've got an Android and it doesn't have a steering wheel, so I can't drive it to a tablet. <laughs> okay. Um, well, if you have an Android tablet, you can pair an Android phone to it. 
Then this I don't is have a, a steering th- wheel in my phone. <laughs> Need a driver app. There's an app for that the somewhere. Over. There's an app for that. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a chess piece, and cool. a very complex piece with the you know with the sets in and everything else, and a piece of pine. Oh, two by four club. It's it's a piece of two by four. I broke about four or five of them because this point is very very small. Um, that's great. Um, but anyhow, it allowed me to do that, and you can continue great to idea. take this. You can take this and duplicate this because I can measure that, and that is sixty six millimeters. So when I come put this on the up here, two and a half inch roughly. I'm sorry, I use, I use metric on that stuff just because it's easier to do that than it is to do the fractions. Yeah. Why is it? Me too. <laughs> okay. America. When I put that up there and start measuring it. And I said 60, this was, I'm sorry, I, I measured to the wrong point. It is 50, 55. So I can come in here, get up here on my camera. if I can do it slowly. Okay, now I'm at 55 mil- millimeters. So when I turn and put this and do another one, it'll be the exact same height and everything will be the same. I just duplicated it and it'll be the same size. You okay. understand? Oh yeah. The, and the key, neat thing on this sphere, it doesn't make any difference. All you have to do is have one jig. Because all you you change it by zooming in and out on your camera, you change the diameter of what you're actually turning by moving in and out. Oh wait a sec, I'm sorry. When I showed that to you, okay. When I zoomed in, when I zoomed in and out, I took it to 54 or 55 as much as I can with my zoom on it. Well, it should be set down set down here. So I'm at 55 millimeters. So now so your template is in proportion to your piece. That is correct. So when I turn another one of these pieces, it'll be the exact same height. Okay. So if you, if you, when you do that template, if you somehow reference that dimension, you can write it right on a template, and then you can go back and set it back up on a. To, in case you have to stop and start over again for setup. My template is 91 millimeters, physically. Okay. So the, temp- the template is bigger than the pattern, the, than the finished piece. It makes it easier to do. It makes it easier when it's magnified. Okay. Now let's talk about the template. Okay. Because I'm getting, I'm seeing emails up here right now or, or chats. I need a, a $75 uh, monitor at... Um, Best Buy, I need to get this. Wasn't somebody making this as complete sets? Oh, wait. I don't, do I don't know. I have not seen anybody doing it. Okay. But, I mean, this is this is unique. So yeah, what type of camera not, do you do this with? I'm actually using my camcorder because I already have a camcorder. I have, my cam, uh, my, I have a camcorder, and the reason why I'm using the camcorder, that's what I'm already set up for. And the camcorder zooms in and out pretty easy. Yeah. You could really use any camera that zooms, couldn't you? You could use any camera yeah. that zooms, or you don't even have to zoom. You, you can do it by position, moving your camera up and down with respect to the work. Wow. Yeah, you're gonna it's almost like you taught us magic. Yeah, it, it, it's easier with something that zooms because then you can go back and, re, and, and adjust it easier. But you can simply move the camera closer, further and closer to, to the subject by repositioning it. 
And the only thing you're doing with the camera is making sure what you're turning is info is it is there and you're entered. You have both points available. You need to have these two points. I suppose even if you didn't have zoom, you could make the ball to fit the size of the monitor. And depending on the diameter of your cylinder, it'll just transfer the image. And when you turn the sphere, it'll be to the diameter of your cylinder or the material on the lathe, not necessarily the diameter of the ball that's on the screen. That you, the, the, you'd the have to have ball, some kind of a scale. The size of the ball on the screen what I do is I, I put the sphere up there just to get, to get an idea of what size, to make sure that it fits in the piece of wood. That's the yes. only reason why I put it up there, to make sure it fits in the piece of wood. Yep, and so really I'm, you could I'm going, it. And my patterns are actually one and a half to two times bigger than what I'm actually turning. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is a technique. This is one great technique. Yeah, it is. I have to, you have to I have do. the scale. What what does the scale one to one, one to point five, or whatever? It's whatever. It's controlled by this by the position and the zoom of your camera. Oh, yeah. okay. Your camera zooms in and out. It changes. I just did this in the beginning of the meeting. This is one of Cindy's. And it's one of Cindy's. This is actually double size. Switch, switch camera. Switch camera. Oh, okay. Now we got okay. you. Okay. Th this was a original. I put the piece of clear plastic. And this clear plastic is the, a document protector. That's oh, what I was asking. It's That's a document protector, and I cut it in half to have two pieces. Buy and, these as, you can buy these as sheets, right, at office supply stores. Well, you buy as a document protector, and it goes in between two sheets, and then you cut it in half, and you have two pieces. There you go. Or yep. you can click it and get something you can run through your printer and print something out, copy it on the printer, or do, you know, copy it from something on the printer. This was copied on the printer to expand it, and if I'd had the right plastic, I could have just put that directly on the... Uh, directly on the plastic and use it that way. But you do need this line through the center. It's very, very important because that's your alignment between your two points. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I've, a, got, I've got some of this paper here. It's called computer graphic. It's yeah. uh, made for uh, inkjet. Yep. You yeah. can get it at Staples, uh, Walmart. But but you can see the proportions of the, of, the, of what I turned and did on that. Yeah, that, that, that's oh, yeah. yeah, it's a Great. significant difference in proportion. It's about two and a half times the difference of what I actually turned. Trey, Trey can I have a question for you. Go ahead. You you are enlarging that. Let's see. No, actually, you're 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 reducing it down to the size. Can you, <laughs> can you go the opposite way and enlarge it? Sure, you you can do any. You can it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Now, by reducing it by having a bigger pattern than what I'm cutting, that means I can more be more precise about the exact making it precisely the same. If it was the other way around, the pattern that you're looking at, um, an error would be multiplied instead of reduced. So if, I'm off, if I'm off a little bit uh, when the pattern's bigger, my error is reduced by uh, by whatever factor I'm at of, of the scale. The other way would be magnified. But yes, you can do that. You Great. just opened up a whole world of ideas there. Yeah, RCA sending you a prize for the tech, for the monitor sales. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, can I beg on you again to turn something else to show this all? Because folks may have tuned in a little bit late. We have about 100 people in our group right now. Would you turn oh. another item or explain That's one? Item? Well, I, I've, I can easily turn the sphere. Let me let me just turn another sphere because that's easier for me to do. Okay. Um, the sphere is the sphere's still between centers. Can you reduce the size of the sphere? 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll make it smaller. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what I'm thinking about is we can all cheat on Cade's egg idea. We just get a basic egg pattern. We can do them from uh, mini birds to ostriches, you know, just by using the zoom. The only problem is that I don't have an egg pattern. Okay, yeah. what do you got? I don't have an egg pattern. I do them all by hand in my eye and just by the measurements I find of the real life egg on Amazon. But and I imagine problem, you can find egg pictures on Pinterest, on Google, on on the internet, many oh. places, print it off and transfer it to a piece of plastic. I would just, just go to your refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could do that. Yeah. It'd be tricky. Take a picture with your phone and print it out. Oh, yeah. by the way, every, every one of them is different. Yeah. Yeah. Think about where yeah. they come from. Every one's different. Yeah. Okay. It's almost like having an overhead projector for your leg. Yeah, I mean, you could use a relatively inexpensive webcam off Amazon, attach it to a okay. tablet or a monitor, and you're off to the races. Okay, I'm back. I'm I'm back to the view that I wanted to show that went crazy. I don't know why it went crazy before. What I've done is I have a piece of clear plastic. I have a circle drawn on it, and in this case, my circle is about. Uh, uh, 12 and a half centimeters or mm, just under five inches. The center points here and I've aligned that center point to that point there and this point here from my drive center to my live center. And when I turned the um, finial, I had my chuck in there to, to hold the finial, but I put my drive center in that chuck to do that alignment. So it's critical that you have that alignment between the two. And I wanted that point to align it to. That's great. Okay. And that's a critical thing is picking that point. So we'll throw this wood on there. Oh, you said you wanted this larger or smaller, you said? Um, uh, literally, uh, um, a change. Okay, different. Okay, well, let me... let me. What size monitor is that? Um, Fourteen? No, it was... So that would be... That would be 18, so about a 19-inch. Okay. Okay. And actually, the challenge is finding something small enough. Trey, what did you do? You, you you zoomed in to make it smaller. Okay, that's my zoom. That would be a, that would be a big ball. Larger. That's going to be a tinier ball. Okay. In front of it. Your elbow is in the way. Your arm is in the way. The arm is in the way. Trey. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, the more you zoom in, the smaller the ball gets. That's great. Yeah. So let's make one about that size. Let me lock, let me lock the camera in. Now I've got the size set. Now I need to, and when I zoom my camera in and out, it changes my point position mm -hmm. on there. So I need to put, position this. Oh, seven inch. Hey, Trey, what size monitor are you using there? I think 18. it's about a 19. Thanks. Yeah, someone typed in the chat uh, that you can get a 14 to a 70, 17 inch monitor at Best Buy for about 70 bucks. Yeah, that would be ideal. I like the smaller size when it's next to your computer, next, next to it instead of the big one. That was Scott Hampton. Thanks, Scott. Mine came out of an uh, office uh, that I used to work in. They upgraded all the monitors for the computers, they were they had to dispose of them because they weren't worth anything. I think I have four or five of them. Okay. Now, this is small. This will be a smaller diameter because I'll reduce the size, and the size of this sphere is going to be. I'll do it. You do it in English. One and five eighths. Five eighths. Inch and five eighths, or four well, Martin, one. 
For Martin and Paul, it's 41. Okay. <laughs> 41 mil. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to jump back to my roughing gouge. Donald in Australia, you use uh, English or a metric? Millimeters. There are metrics. Could you use a computer monitor to do that with? Any yeah. monitor will work. If it has an input for USB, it's easy. If it has an input for HDI, HMDI, it's easy. Uh, if it's RCA, that's a little bit difficult, but you can do it. So don't shame that the uh, Radio Shack went away because that's where you get all those clip, all those connectors. Yeah, Walmart yeah. sells them. Yeah, yeah. If you got a smart, if you got a smart TV, you can actually cast from your iPhone to the television and, and use yeah. a small television. Yeah, or your laptop or from your Android, not just an iPhone. Yeah. You can also use a USB webcam into your laptop and then cast that from your laptop to the small monitor. If you use uh, Apple, it's easy to do an Apple TV thing. Because mm -hmm. right now I'm watching it on that 60-inch TV uh, well, across you know, the room from me. You know, you can take a uh, phone and plug a phone into the TV and do it too. So, Yep, yep. You can cast directly from your phone. Well, we are technical world tonight. I plug your phone <laughs> into your computer and use the monitor on your computer. Yeah, you can get a doggle that goes right into your uh, conventional television too, like from your iPhone or from a, a phone. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get the grandkids over here. All right, let's pay attention to the slicing here, folks. Look at the cut he's making. It's not what comes out, it's how he's doing it. My shaving. Since this wow. is a 40, 40 grind, you saw what I did when I got to the edge. All I did was rotate it, and I'm still in the, still in the same cut. If I had another ball gouge, I would have to move the handle and swing it to be able to do that. Well, I can rotate this anywhere I want while I'm making the cut. Yep. He's cutting, he's getting long ribbons and shavings, not dust. That's slicing. That's not gouging, that's slicing. You realize what this is doing for duplicating now? If you do- Yeah, yeah, I recognize them. that immediately, Ronnie. That's that's an excellent point. Man, this is- that's I can, I can make a, two goblets that are just alike, you know? That, that's Why trying to get to do that though. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll come in. And I, I did a final refine that was a, a straight, negative rake scraper. Is that a negative rake scraper or, or a skew? Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. This is a negative rake open. scraper. <laughs> that's a skew. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they look almost alike. Amazing. <laughs> I get calls from people every day wanting to buy negative rake scrapers for their carbide tools. And if I tell them that you turn that tool up on a bias, put it on an ankle, the wood will never know if it's negative rake or not. This has really opened up some eyes here. Hey, Ronnie, you want to go shop for TVs tomorrow? I tell you what, I'm a, I got that JT uh, ca camera tool. I'm going to try to do the same thing on the outside rather than the inside. All right. I have a spare JVC camera in my, uh, that I just inherited. Well, bring it, bring it with that spiraling tool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can carry all the stuff, Ronnie. Well, you don't well, have to carry it one way, Eddie. Oh I'll, yeah, I forgot about that. I'll come to the car and help you unload it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Ronnie wants to come to the shop and help you unload it. <laughs> so there's another That's sphere. Very nice, Trey. Very nice. That's very gorgeous, Trey, Trey, can I ask a question? Well, that's the two, two of them, they're different sizes, but yeah, okay. go ahead. 
Yes, when you have that in your in your lathe, can you put a piece of uh, white paper underneath on your on your plate, and that way you can see where your tailstock and your headstock will come up, and you can mark that on that on that um, clear plastic to reference points, so you don't have to line it up every time you put it on there. Um, what? It all depends on. No, no, I'm just yeah. saying physically, yeah. physically, you put a piece of white paper underneath there so that you can so you can mark where your headstock is or your uh, uh, drive, drive, drive part and words, where your tailstock is. You can words, mark them on you can mark them on there and they'll be there all the time. Yeah, but if you move the camera, that line will move. No, it won't. It yeah, goes along yeah, with your center. It will go along with your center line. Okay. No, no. Trey's right. Trey's right. If you bump your camera, that line changes. You have to redraw it. Okay. That's the line that you're talking about. Can't see it, Trey. Oh, okay. Let me let me switch cameras. Can you see it? Okay, that's the line yes, you're talking yes. about. Yes. But go further. No, go. I do. No, go I further. Change my, I, I changed my Zoom. Look what happened. Yeah, I understand that. But go back, go back to where it was. Okay, now right there. If you take a no, no, hold it. Go out. Go out. All right, now you have a point to point. You have a line, right? Yep. Okay. Now on your clear plastic that you have on the TV, you could put a piece of white paper underneath or on your on your bed and that will show show a line there that you can mark on your clear pieces of paper each time you put it in there it wouldn't have to change it yeah yeah that's but, pretty cool it changes uh, when you zoom you know, say, no, I, no it hasn't got anything to do with the camera you still have the center lines the same center lines the same what i'm trying to say on your on your tv that piece of plastic that you have in your TV with that yep. white paper underneath your tailstock there, you can mark it on the clear clear plastic to where your tailstock is and your headstock, and you don't have to realign it every time you put a part in there. But I don't have to realign it if I put another piece in here right now. Yeah, but the plastic on your TV doesn't have no reference points. You have to. You have to adjust that to that. That way, that way, that way. When you when you do that, you have a reference point on the clear plastic, say like a red marker or something, so that it will show your tailstock and your headstock lining up correctly without the piece in there. Okay, yeah. but I was. Uh, if if I I can turn another piece in here without any problem right now and, it's, and it stays as aligned. Yes, but I'm just saying in future references, you take that clear piece off of your TV, and then you put the clear piece back on your TV. You'll have a reference point wherever you wherever you're lining your camera up to that you still have. But, then you line it up. But notice when when I go in and out. Yeah. This this is the center line and it's lined up on my TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I change the zoom, it changes because yeah, my know. camera my camera is not set at a dead ninety degree angle straight up off of the lake. Okay. All right. If it okay. was if it was ninety degrees, you could put the marker on there so that the it, next time you put that sheet on there or that circle. It will come out exactly where it belongs. Okay. If it was perfectly aligned and I dropped the plumb bob from the center of the focus down to it right. and aligned it that way, when I zoom in and out, it wouldn't move. Right. Okay. Um, That's what but, I was getting. That's what I was getting at. If it was 90 degrees up and down, you wouldn't have to worry about the center line moving. But depending on what I'm turning, 
I will I will take my camera and move my camera. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. De depends on what I'm turning, I'll reposition the camera to get to get it to where it needs to be. All right. I don't remember this camera this camera doesn't have to be directly overhead. It could be 45 degrees behind you, behind your weight. Is, that is, is correct. Because you're looking at an an op, an, a circular object object. So if we roll back, you know, if tall people and a camera right over the head, it might be a problem. People having a, a big bulky JBC like somebody gave me, uh, I wouldn't want to have that up that high and, and make a rake for it. I want to make more permanent. So it's, now, it's, it's, there's a lot of flexibility here. Now, th there's one other thing I'll add to it. When I'm we're doing the spindle work, my spindle gouge cuts above center. I'm not cutting down on center. If I'm on center, that edge is right where it's supposed to be. Yeah. If I'm cutting no. above center, for me right now because I have there. part of it hiding behind it. I've had you in the morning. So what I actually do is I watch the pattern cut on the top of it instead of what's cutting on the bottom. You understand what I'm saying? When I'm cutting well, above yeah. center, I'm actually this is actually cutting up here, but I'm really it's hard to see the pattern below the tool, but you can watch it on the top half of it. Make sense? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ray? Yes. The way you determine the diameter of the piece is you're putting it up there and then you're getting your little ruler and measured it to the size you want it to be. And then you leave it at that point, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. And I, I changed the zoom on the camera to match it for the piece I've got. Okay. If, so that piece had to be three, if that piece had to be three or 30 millimeters, all you do is zoom in until. If you wanted a four inch a sphere, you, you, you zoom out. And if you wanted a two inch sphere, you, you, you would zoom in until you get to that point. Yep. Yep. And I was just thinking about this. This doesn't have to be limited to spindles. No, no, you could turn no, no. it on a on a bowl blank or some I, sort I, of end grain blank, and you could do a perfect hemisphere. You can make well, can two of them, and you have a perfect hemisphere box. Hey, right? uh, I I could do a hollow form and cut the outside of the hollow form to a defined shape. Yep. Yeah. Okay. If I turn it right now, I'd be turning a two inch ball. Based on the on the way that's set. Okay. Okay. But if I wanted a four inch, oh yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm now turning a four inch ball. Yeah. Trey, you, need to, Trey, you, need, to do, you need to do one more thing. Okay. Tomorrow morning, you patent this. <laughs> yeah, uh, so get, Ronnie, get Ronnie and I a chance to patent it tonight. <laughs> but it'll do spindle work. That's that's a you know shape other than the uh, than a ball. And that finial, this finial is not a ball. No. So it, it'll do it would do just about any shape. In, including the outside of a bowl or hollow form or whatever, or a banister or, or whatever you want to on that. This is nice. It's transferable oh. across all kinds. Unbelievable. Of Again, Dre, you, you, you see so amazes. Thank so, you, Dre. This is just That's something great. that, you know, looking at lucid wood turnings, I said, well, let me try this. I think it'll work. So. And they weren't Great. doing. They weren't doing it. It was just a uh, thought that came in, out of mind when they were talking about something else. So. A great idea. Yeah, that'd great be idea. great yeah. for trying to get proportions right for for finials and stuff too. Yeah. Well, you yeah, can come in practice. there. Uh, you don't need the study stick anymore. You already got it on there. So. Yeah, and you you can copy somebody else's finial if you get a picture of it. Well, that video that I just did with Cindy's out of her book. There you go. 
Now, before right, everybody so goes out and buys, uh, before everybody goes out and buys all these TVs and monitors and everything like that, you probably have uh, old VGA monitors laying around. You can get an adapter that goes from HDMI to VGA for like 10, 15, 20 bucks. Um, so, and if you have a camera that goes to HDMI, a lot of the older cameras are just composite, which is the old yellow and, and you know, you don't need sound, but just single, you got adapters for that also. I've got a ton of monitors in my, in my garage that I use all around and I have a, a one to eight replicator for VGA. So I have them all plugged into a, a replicator and then I plug that into my cable box, which is HDMI. Um, you know, just monitors people give away or they throw out or you get them five bucks a piece. So yeah, you don't have to go check, crazy. Check the thrift yeah. stores. Yeah, yeah, check these yeah. right, the red, white, and blues. Yeah, you can even use your cell phone or an old cell phone and plug hey, that right. into your laptop. And now your laptop is the screen. Hey, Trey, I'm on a laptop. cell phone right now. Right? Trey, yeah. yeah. Can you... if, you're, if you're out and you see something that catches your eye, could you take a picture of it with your camera, come home, print it, and, and then make that template? Yes. You could do the bulb or a flower but, or... But, yep. but I can do better yet. I can use camera... Um, oh, what is the name of it? Um, camera Lucida. Um, it allows me to uh, take it and... Well, let me... Give me a second. I'll turn it on. I'll show you what it does. Now, could you go from a cell phone to an iPad like that? I was on a cell phone. You were watching me on the cell phone just then. Yeah, but use your cell phone as your camera and the iPad yes. as your monitor. Yeah, yes. Mama, you have to you have to use a yeah. an app in your cell phone and your uh, iPad in order to talk to each other. And it's a very simple app and it's free. Huh. Do you know what it's called? <laughs> well, I got it on the app store. I'll find it right now. There's a bunch of them. Uh, yeah. There's a Put it in the chat. If you're using an iPhone, uh, Apple platforms, oh, right. it's, an, it's an NDI app. Uh, there's a, an app that I use called IV Cam. Uh, there's a bunch of those. NDI Mirror is one of them. NDI Viewer is another one. It's all in your app program. Just type in NDI. Okay. The tech you on the use your phone for a scanner all, and everything else. The tech on the oh, Apple right. platform is all NDI based. So if you're on Apple platforms, you can search on NDI and find something that you can use. It doesn't work on Android platforms. If you've got an Android phone, you got to use something else. Um, I've successfully used IV Cam. Uh, there are others that work the same way for Android. I have an Android phone and pad. I was just inherited. Um, and it links between them very simply. So it, it happens. I know nothing about Android. It took me a whole day to figure out how to turn it on to turn it off. I'm <laughs> on my iPad right now. You said M is in Mary, D for David, I is in... Uh... N, N, is in N is in Nancy. The other yeah, girl, Nancy, not Mary, Nancy. Put it in chat, please. There you go. I don't it's know what the chat is. I don't know what the app is because I don't have Android, uh, Apple platforms. So okay, Indy. let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. N NDI monitor, NDI HX HX camera, or NDI HX capture. Pick, click on one and read the directions on the description on the piece, but they're very simple. Um, you yeah, see, it uses what I have your Wi-Fi. It usually uses your Wi-Fi. So. Uh, what you've got is you have a client and a server. So the server piece is on your phone and it generates the stream. And then you have the client, which is on the other device, the iPad or the, or the, or the computer, and it receives the stream. And there's got to be some connection. So you start the stream and then you turn on the app on your computer and have it find, find the stream, if that makes sense. And it'll figure it all out through the Wi-Fi. Mine's called NDI Cam. There you go. The one that's on my phone. My, I just clicked it on my iPad and boop, went right to it. All right, what you got, Trey? Let me show you. This is Camera Lucid, though. And basically, I'm, a I'm just going to take a picture of this sphere. 
Okay. Tell it to use the photo. Okay. I'm getting rid of that. Um, <clears throat> I'm, gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the right mode. Well, let me let me go back up. Now, right now, I can change the size of that sphere and rotate it. Do whatever I want to with it. Then I go to draw mode. Now I'll just put it. I'll just put it over my gene so you can see what it's doing. I can change how much density it has on there, and I can actually turn something to that to that diameter. The advantage of having it all built into one thing is, is when I zoom in, I still follow that same pattern, that same edge. All I've done is zoom in on it. So I could have that over my, over my lab and do the same thing with it if I have it mounted. Hey, Trey, when you, when you were doing this before, you said that you're following a certain edge. Could you explain that real quickly again? I was following... Um, well, I'll just, since I'm holding this, I was following, okay. Was say, you, fitting, hey, are you fitting the wood inside the image on your monitor? Is that what you were doing? Uh, in the beginning, are you talking about in the very beginning? No, when, like right now, like when you're in the final, you know, getting the final shape in. When I'm getting the final shape, you're talking about with the roughing gouge? No, I no. Mean, uh, with your with your bowl gouge or with the spindle gouge or the detail gouge or whatever you're using. <coughs> okay. Yeah, there. When I was getting that, I was following this edge right here and watching that edge. On your monitor. On my monitor. Thank you. And right now, yeah. what I have is a cell phone yeah. sitting over my computer. Yeah, but Trey, I'm, you... I'm on a I'm on a cell. The image that you're looking at is on a cell phone. Yeah, but you're really watching the top edge and you're cutting the bottom one, right? I'm cutting the bottom, but since my um, my scraping and uh, the 2020 gouge, yeah, you cuts, get your tools if, I cut, if I cut on center, I can watch up where the bottom edge that I'm cutting on. Okay, and how are you generating that image on your cell phone, the circle image? Okay, I'm using camera lucida on it. Okay. Uh, it's a software package. Um, what it is made for is I can take this here. I can set my phone at an angle. And I'll go ahead and just do it right here. I can set my phone at an angle. And I can sit there and draw that. I'm trying to draw looking at it, but I can actually draw that on the draw that using that pattern. Great. Spell that last name. Camera what? Just I'm a putting second. It in chat, I'm putting it in chat, Ronnie. It's L-U-C-I-D-A. That is correct. L-U-C-I-D-A. And it must be cheap because I have it. <laughs> it's not an expensive app. It's a relatively inexpensive app. It says 10 bucks. I'm yeah. going to do something like that. Then how high above the the lathe do you have that iPhone camera? It was probably about nine or ten inches. Okay. All right. Thanks. Now I've used and, and it's great for drawing on something. For instance, I have an object, a piece of wood or something, and I want to draw draw something on there. I can duplicate that pattern by drawing on it directly. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Have my cap have my camera mounted, and then I can draw that pattern. Or, you know, I can draw a picture on it and use it to draw pictures of stuff, you know, on my subject that I'm doing. Okay. Let me swing now, this around. I'm just I'm talking. Gonna, I'm going to expand Matt Harbour's thing a minute ago about what are you following the top edge or the bottom edge? Um, you, you know, both sides are going to be the same when you finish, but here's the deal. His camera's right over his head. Suppose you can't put the camera right over the head right over the top, and you have to have it on a, on a counter behind you or angled. Um, that is when you can't see the tool, but you will see the results. So you look at what I would call the shadow cut, not the actual cut, but the other piece, the piece that's flying away from you, the end, the end result. Um, you, you follow the, you cut by following that. And, because if you 
get confused and you follow the tool rest or a thing down below you, your mind is going to take you in a different direction than that photo will. Now, I found on the spindles when I'm cutting above center, I always look at, you have to look at the top to see where the cut actually comes from. Yeah, it's too hard to follow the other way. Well, the other way, my tool is hiding the cut. Yeah. Yeah. But your end result is still there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, it's still, you still see it on the, you still see the cut removed from the top. Yeah. That's where you have to concentrate. Yep. Concentrate on the bottom, you, you, you're you looking at a shadow. Now, the, there is a minor learning curve um, in that I am looking at a camera and turning a piece of wood without looking at the piece of wood where my tool is. Hey, that's why we do two by fours. Well, but but that's that is part of a challenge is, is actually uh, I'm comfortable enough with the bowl gouge doing it, but it, uh, being able to do the turning without looking at what you're turning. All you're doing is looking at the uh, the TV. Yeah, you know, you yeah, can but that Trey, that's not much different than when you're doing your turning and you're watching the top edge. I'm not watching the cutting edge. I'm not watching my tool. I'm watching the shadow of the cut. So it's yeah. not much different than that, right? Not a whole lot, but you actually get you actually can see the tool in your peripheral vision, even though you're not focused on it. Yeah. Hey, if you guys got to practice, chew gum and walk at the same time. All right. Thank you, Trey. This was a fantastic demonstration. We're all going out looking for those clear sheets to stick over our televisions right now. Um, I'm looking to see if I got some spare monitors I can sell. This has Man, been that great. Opens up so many possibilities. Oh, it really does. In my Amazon cart. I, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, you're not. I've already got two monitors in the shop. <laughs> here's the deal. You turn something using this technique. I want you to show it to us and tell us you did it with this technique.